So good morning. It is such a great pleasure and privilege for me to share with all of you this joint work with Professor Heckman, Rodrigo Pinto, and David Rolls on a prenatal and early childhood intervention, the Nurse Family Partnership. So as a motivation, high quality home visiting programs are effective tools for delivering services towards disadvantaged families. And these type of programs serve around 500,000 children across the US today. However, these programs may differ in the characteristics of, of their target population, the services and the, their goals, and their frequency and delivery methods. In this context, the North Family Partnership is the most well-developed home visiting program in the US. So the NFP consists of home visits conducted by trained nurses during pregnancy and during the first two years of life of the child. And in these visits, nurses teach mothers about healthy behaviors during pregnancy, good parenting practices in terms of stimulating cognitively and emotionally the child, and also about the importance of setting life goals. The NFP targets a population of first-time disadvantaged mothers. For instance, consider loose economic status if they are young, unmarried, or very poor. So three randomized control trials have been conducted to evaluate this program. The first one in Elmira in 1978, the second one in Memphis in 1990, and this is the data we are currently using in this project, and the third one, lastly, in Denver in 1994. So why is it relevant to study this early childhood intervention? Because the NFP model has been taken up to a scale and today it operates across 43 states in the US. And the NFP serves more than 25,000 families per year. And it has been expanded due to the 1.5 billion funding from the healthcare reform bill in 2010. So in this project, we study two research questions. The first one is that we reanalyzed the treatment effects documented in the previous literature by accounting for the features of the randomization protocol. And because several outcomes were collected, we also account for the potential threat of selectively reporting statistically significant results. Second, and very important, we go beyond treatment effects towards understanding how this intervention works. What are the mechanisms through which the NFP operates in boosting later in childhood outcomes? And here we hypothesize two types of mechanisms. The first one, channels related to parenting skills. And here we address the question of how maternal investments respond to intervention and how such responses can affect human capital formation. And the second type of channels is children's early skills. And here we analyze if program effects on early skills translate into later program gains in later outcomes. So now let me give you a little bit of background about the Memphis randomized control trial. The trial recruit potential mothers between June 1990 and August 1991 through the Memphis Shelby County Health Department. And mothers were invited to participate if they meet the following eligibility criteria. If they were less than 29 weeks of pregnant, had no previous live birth, and no specific chronic illnesses. And also if they met two of the following disadvantaged criteria. If they were unmarried, low educated or unemployed. So the total eligible sample was 1,290 mothers and of them 1,139 agree to participate. So randomization took place within a strata based on five characteristics. The first one, maternal race, 
maternal age, gestational age at enrollment, employment status of the household head, and geographic region of residence. And mothers were randomized into four groups, two control and two treatment groups. The control groups received free transportation to prenatal visits and health and developmental screenings during infancy for the child. While the first treatment group, treatment group one, received on top of this home visiting uh, during pregnancy. And the second treatment group also received home visits by nurses during the first two years of life of the child. However, due to financial constraints, control group one and treatment group one were not followed after birth. So throughout all of our analysis, we refer to the control group as the control group two here, and that is comprised by 515 mothers and their children. And our treatment group is the treatment group two, which comprise 228 mothers and their children. So here we want to show you some summary statistics for sociodemographic characteristics at intake. And here the main takeaway point is that random randomization was well done. There were just very few imbalances at baseline and we take into account those in our inference analysis. So now let me move to the first part of this project where we reanalyze the treatment effects by using a tailored inference method that accounts for two things. First, for the features or particularities of the randomization protocol, for instance, for the fact that randomization was done within strata, and here our methodology used permutation-based inference analysis that are distribution-free methods. And also, we account for the potential threat of selectively reporting statistically significant results. And we do that by adjusting our inference to account for multiple hypothesis testing using the step-down procedure proposed by Romano and Wolf. So now let me give you a sense of what was the data collected by the NFP. So they collect information at birth on birth weight, placenta weight, and at the end of the program, at age two, they assess the quality of the home environment using a well-known inventory known as the home score. And this instrument collects information on the quality of the cognitive stimulation and emotional support that the child receives. Also, they collect information on non-abusive parenting attitudes and beliefs and also, they have information on maternal mental health, self-esteem, and mastery maternal skills. At age six, the NFP assess several dimensions of children's skills using psychological instruments. For instance, to measure cognitive skills, they use a well-known and validated instrument known as the Kaufman Assessment Battery for Children. KABC. Also, at age six, they collect information on child social emotional development and mental health. They administer the child behavior checklist, the CBCL, that corresponds to maternal reports on children's behavior and emotional problems. Also, they administer the MacArthur Story Steam Battery that assess information on child social emotional development for instance, in terms of prosocial skills, like warmth and empathy and aggression. At age 12, they collect a rich set of information on achievement outcomes. For instance, the Peabody Individual Achievement Test Scores and the Tennessee Achievement Program Test, that is the TCAP. Also, they collect information on grades during school specifically grades one to five after kindergarten. Also, they collect information on child behavior and school absence. And in terms of health, they collect information on body max index. So now, let me summarize the NFP treatment effects 
unselected outcomes. So here in the second column, you can find the conditional effect size in a standard deviation. Then in the third column, you can find the single hypothesis test p-value that control for the features of the randomization protocol. And in the fourth column, the step-down p-value that controls for multiple hypothesis testing. So in summary, at birth, we find that participation in the program increased birth weight for male babies that participate in the program. Then at age two, we find that the NFP improved the quality of the home environment for both female participants and male participants. For instance, it increased the home environment by 0.3 standard deviation for females and by 0.17 standard deviation for males. It also improved the parenting attitudes towards non-abuse and neglect for both gender. And additionally, participation in the program improved maternal mental health in the sense of less anxiety and better self-esteem and mastery skills. Then at age six, we find that the NFP increased cognitive skills for both females and males with the treatment effects a little bit higher for males. They are of around 0.3 standard deviation for males and of 0.12 standard deviation for females. Participation in the NFP also enhanced socioemotional development, mainly for girls in terms of less conduct problems and better prosocial skills. Lastly, at age 12, we find that treated boys increase their performance in achievement outcomes in several dimensions related to language and math. And also participation in the program increase, decreases the number of school absence for treated boys. In terms of improving health, participation in the program improve the health for the female participants in terms of a lower BMI. Now, let me show you the, se the second part of this project that is very important. We aim to go beyond treatment effects towards understanding the mechanisms. So here, we ask the question if NFP effects on maternal investments and early skills explain later treatment effects on childhood outcomes. So it is important to acknowledge that randomization allows us to identify the causal effect of participating in the NFP on intermediate skills, and also the effect of the program on later outcomes Why? However, randomization doesn't allow us to establish that the program improvement of intermediate skills cause the later program gains in outcomes. And the reason why is that in addition to intermediate skills that we can measure in our data, denoted here by theta p. So to address this issue in this paper, we follow the methodology proposed by a recent paper by Professor Heckman and co-authors on the channels underlying the Perry Preschool program. And the idea is to supplement the experimental evidence with an econometric model that links intermediate skills with later outcomes. And in the paper, we provide more details on the models and as well as some specification tests that validate and support this strategy. So according to this model, we can decompose the total effect of the participating in the program on later outcomes. Why? In terms of two types of changes. The first one corresponds to the average change in unmeasured skills, and this is what we call the residual effect. And the second type of changes are changes associated with the program improvement on intermediate skills that we can measure and that can be of different dimensions. So according to this decomposition, 
good mediators are those not only that have a treatment effect that are affected by the program, but also those mediators have to be correlated with our outcome of interest. So in practice, the skills, the data, are unobserved. So in this paper, we rely on a rich set of item level data from the psychological instruments that I explained before. And here we use factor analysis to extract these latent skills, and also this method allows us to control for potential measurement error. So now let me summarize our empirical strategy. So first, we estimate the parameters of a measurement system. A, measure, a measurement system relates the observed item level data with their associated skills. And we estimate the parameters of this model taking into account the, for the fact that intermediate skills can be correlated. Then, with the parameters estimated in this step, in the second step, we predict factor scores for each type of skill. In the third step, using those predicted uh, factor scores as proxies for the true skills, we estimate econometric methods that link these skills with later outcomes of interest. And lastly, we, we compute our decompositions, and we only decompose treatment effects that are statistic significant. So now let me show you the results in terms of mechanisms. So the first type of, an of analysis that we did is that we decomposed the treatment effect at age six in terms of the program gains on mediators at age two. So how we, can we read this, dra this graph? So in the rows, you can find the treatment effects that we aim to decompose, and the colors represent the potential mediators at age two. And the numbers inside each bar correspond to the percent of the overall treatment effect that is explained by the program effect on a given mediator. And the number above each bar corresponds to the associated p-value with those in red denoting the statistically significant channels. And here on the right, you can find the treatment effect size that we aim to decompose. So for instance, for the case of the program effects on cognitive skills at age six for females, we find that the program improvement of the quality of the home environment explain 35% of the overall treatment effect on cognition for females at age six, while the program enhancement of parenting attitudes explain 14% of the overall treatment effect on cognitive abilities. The program uh, reduction of maternal anxiety at age two explain 25% of the overall treatment effect on cognitive abilities at age six for girls. Now, in terms of the program effects on socio-emotional development for females, we find again that the program improvement of the quality of the home environment and of good parenting play an important role. They explain between 9% and 21% of the overall treatment effect on these socio-emotional development skills at age six. Also, for instance, the program improvement of mastery skills at age two explain 29% of the overall treatment effect of improving warm and empathy for females at age six. Now, for the case of boys at age six, we find that in terms of the treatment effects on cognition at age six, they are also mainly explained by the program enhancement of the quality of the home environment, which explain 22% of the overall treatment effect while the program improvement on good parenting attitudes explain 11% of the overall treatment effect on cognition for boys. Also, 
the program increase in birth weight explained 14% of the overall treatment effect for cognition for boys at age six. In terms of the treatment effects on aggression for boys, it is largely unexplained by our model and by our data. But we can find that the program enhancement of parenting attitudes explained 8% of the overall treatment effect on less aggression for boys. Now, in terms of the, the composition of the channels underlying the achievement outcomes for boys, this is the second set of analysis we did. We decomposed treatment effects at age 12 in terms of potential mediators at age six. So here, what we find is that the program improvement on cognitive ability at age six explains a huge percentage of the overall treatment effect on achievement for boys. So for instance, the program enhancement of cognition explained between 40 and 17% on several dimensions of achievement, math, language, or reading. At age 12, there were also some important treatment effects for boys in terms of less school absence and less internalizing behavior problems. And here again, we find that the program improvement on cognitive skills play an important role. They explain between 17 and 24% of the overall treatment effect on these outcomes at age 12 for boys. <laughs> Lastly, in terms of the program effects on females at age 12, we find that the program improve health in terms of lower BMI. However, this treatment effect is largely unexplained by our model and our data, except that we find that the program reduction on conduct problems at age six explain 20% of the overall treatment effect on BMI for girls at age 12. So now, to conclude, the evidence provided by this paper enrich the current growing literature about the importance of early childhood to reduce later inequalities. Since different early childhood interventions target different periods of child development and they are based on different curricula, early childhood interventions could operate through different mechanisms. So understanding how or what are the mechanisms under which these different early childhood intervention operates can enrich and can improve the designs of more effective and better early childhood policies. So in future work, we hope to extend these analyses to include more long-term young adult outcomes in the other randomized control trials, for instance, using the data on the latest follow-up in the randomization trial in Elmira at age 27, Memphis at age 18, and Denver at age nine. And also, we aim to analyze the effect of the treatment and the mediating mechanisms on health at birth and physical growth. Thank you.